Hello everyone, Queen Image Edit recently updated to version 2509. Now it works like Nano Banana, accepting multiple input images at once. I've shared some workflows built using this in our free community. Before this update, if you want to transfer the pose of this woman onto that woman, you had to stitch the two images together. That's because older Queen Edit versions only accepted a single image input. On top of that, you needed to provide a LoRa to help the model understand the pose transfer task. You then get an output image, but it was still this stitched version. Its size was only about 1 megapixel. You had to crop it to finally get your result. That final image ended up very small and low quality, just 586 by 888 pixels. The new version changes this. You can input up to 3 images now. What's amazing is that you can input an open pose skeleton image. The model understands that means pose transfer. No LoRa needed. The output image is no longer stitched together, so no cropping is necessary. Hearing this, you might consider deleting your flash contact models. But hold on, I believe flash contact still has advantages. I spent a few days building a workflow that can compete with Queen Edit. Let's look at some comparison images. I generated tons of images for testing. Let's focus on challenging situations where one model struggles to transfer the pose accurately. In those tough cases, I found flex contacts outperforms Queen Image Edit most of the time. So this is our subject, a sexy lady, and here's our pose reference image. Comparing contacts and Queen outputs, your C contacts captures the pose better. Notice the woman's index finger gently touching her lower lip. Contacts replicates that accurately. Let's see another example. Again, context delivers greater accuracy, right? These two examples and the hardest test. Both poses involve three-quarter portraits, and both subjects are standing. The real challenge comes when one input is a full-body standing shot, and the other is a partial shot with a different pose, like sitting or kneeling. Let's examine those difficult cases. Honestly, in these challenging situations, I generated several outputs with Queen Edit and picked the best one. Still, Queen Edit couldn't match context. There was only one scenario where Queen outperformed better. Let me show you. The challenge was making this standing woman lie on her stomach. Notice the significant issues with the feed generated by context. Another reason I prefer context is image quality. Outputs from Queen Edit model are limited to about 1 megapixel. Going beyond that causes problems. Look at this example. This output resolution is 960 by 1440, roughly 1.4 megapixels. You can see issues appearing along the bottom edge. Flex context, however, handles resolutions up to around 2 megapixels. Queen Edit also downgrades image quality more noticeable than flux context. Comparing these two, the left image uses Queen Image Edit with a Lightning 4 steps LoRa. It generated super fast, taking only 4 sampling steps. The right image took 20 sampling steps without a Lightning LoRa. More steps do yield finer details. Look at the tree bark. The differences seem subtle, right? Now let's compare the better Queen Edit result with one from Flex Context. The red image is from Flex Context. It's clear that Context lost some details during generation. However, it maintains better facial consistency. Look at the features of her mouth, for example. Queen Edit outputs seem AI polished, losing some consistency and having a stronger AI look. Personally, I prefer Flex. Last details can be recovered later. You can use the workflow from my previous video, but inconsistent facial features are much harder to fix. Now if you want to know the magic behind this flex context workflow, please follow along with me. Be aware, it requires more effort than Queen Edit for better results. I also use SD 1.5 control net here. Even if post transfer isn't your main interest, 
Seeing me break down this workflow will give you a deeper understanding of Flux context. Let's jump right into Conf UI. Here's our final output image. These are the inputs. Success hinges on guiding the context model correctly. Luckily, Flask Context supports ControlNet. I tested Queen Edit with ControlNet. It didn't throw errors, but image quality suffered badly with messed up hands and feet. Flask Context handles ControlNet much better. Here, I used two ControlNets. Open Pose. You see the skeleton image imported. And depth. Here's the depth map preview. I actually used SD 1.5 to generate an image for the depth map. This is the image SD 1.5 produced. Her pose is close to the original reference. The style also matches our target character because I used IP adapter. I also provide two reference images for context. You see two reference latent nodes in this group. The first reference is obviously the portrait of our target character. Context needs all the information from this image except the pose. Pose information comes from ControlNet, as I just showed. So we have pose info from ControlNet and the character info from the reference image but that wasn't enough. In my earlier tests, I often got two women with different poses overlapping the same image. That's why I added the second reference image, this one. This image came from the two groups above. It actually looks quite close to our desired output. I achieved this largely thanks to this specific LoRa. If you have this LoRa, you can input an image like this and help Flux contact understand you want a post transfer. However, this image has flaws. Let's zoom in. See the damaged details on her face? There are also artifacts on this part of her leg and some areas of her dress. I fixed this by painting over the problem areas and blurring them. Context also needs a prompt for guidance, especially since one reference image is blurry. That's why I added the word deblur to the prompt. I also describe her pose with some simple words. For the best results with this workflow, here are some tips. First, let's look at the SD 1.5 group. You might notice these nodes are blurring her face and hands. Why? SD 1.5 often struggles with hands. If we feed context a depth map showing hands with actual fingers, it gets confused. The face gets blurred here because her face shape is slimmer than our original subject. If your subjects have similar face shapes, you can set this blurring option to false. This T-Cache node speeds up image generation for Flux context. Nunchaku is even faster, but it doesn't cooperate well with LoRa's. Even with T-Cache, generation can take time. Plus, this LoRa doesn't always give the precise post on the first try. You might need a few attempts. To save time, try increasing the real L1 thread's value. Setting it to 2 gives you a quick preview to check the post. If it's good, set it back to a lower value, like 0.2. For the final render. This LoRa can produce bad results in extreme cases. Look at this example. Here I tried making this woman assume this tricky pose. Flux context, even with the LoRa, struggled badly to copy it. My fix was to blur a large area of the image in the next group. I used very high blur strength here to stop context from misreading the pose. 
Finally, in the last group, you adjust the strength of the depth control net based on how accurate the depth map is. Here I set it to 0 0.7. Here's the final output. It has some issues, but getting this sexy lady with a beautiful dress to do this knee strike pose is actually amazing enough. Alright, let's wrap up. Flash context is actually easy to use once you know how to guide it. If you need to block certain information, take actions like blurring parts of your images. If you found this tutorial helpful, consider subscribing to the channel. Supporting our community is also great appreciated. Thanks for watching and see you next time.